as we see these roll out, are we seeing more in the business of the future, are we going to see large companies? Will large companies still play as big a role in the business ecosystem that they do now? Or will we see many more small companies networked together? We is it a big company future or a small company future? The answer to that question, of course, is yes. But I think that you framed it in exactly the wrong way. Because you're going to have very large companies that don't employ a fraction of the people that large companies employed in the year 2000. So sales huge, employment small. The, the, the revenue to employee ratio is going to be transformed. Because, because, because of the brilliant innovations from people like SAP and the entrepreneurs represented here. And we're, the one other area where I'm going to disagree with Professor Kako is you, know, you can't mass produce minds. Forgive me, but my, my serious academic background was AI. You know, and, <laughs> yes, and if it's right. anything that we're focusing on, it's, it's, it's the, the ability to algorithmize, to, to use technology as a vehicle to either leverage individual minds or to usefully and cost effectively automate or augment how people make decisions and how people create. So the economics are being transformed for this, and I think it's going to be a very interesting challenge how people are going to find jobs. I don't know what the answer to that is, but I know what the answer is not. I the answer is not four years in college. I'm going to ask. I'm going to pick a little quarrel with the word jobs because I think that may be the that may be the model that ah. doesn't work. Ah, I thought you meant Steve Jobs. Sorry. No, well that's no. One never picks a quarrel with him. Um, but uh, but 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 it may just be that the idea that a for those of us who are Americans, the idea that a, the, the choice between a W-2 and a W-9 may just become a different choice in, terms, in terms of how you add value. But yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, I must disagree with my esteemed <laughs> colleague here. <laughs> okay. it, it, except First for of all, part. let me say yeah. that <laughs> science is the engine of prosperity. From steam power to electricity to the laser to the transistor <coughs> to the computer. That's not true. We're That's talking technology. about. Hey, mate, technology. hey, can I have my, can <laughs> I have my say? Okay. Sure. You had your say. Let yeah. me have my say. Yes. However, the information revolution has a weakness, and the weakness is precisely the educational system. The United States has the worst educational system known to science. Our graduates compete regularly at the level of third world countries. <laughs> so how come the scientific establishment of the United States doesn't collapse? If we're producing uh, a generation of dummies, if the stupid index of America keeps rising every year, just watch network television and reality shows, right? How come the scientific establishment of the United States doesn't collapse? Let me tell you something. Some of you may not know this. America has a secret weapon. That secret weapon is the H-1B. Without the H-1B, the scientific establishment of this country would collapse. Forget about Google. Forget about Silicon Valley. There would be no Silicon Valley without, without the H-1B. And you know what the H-1B is? It's the genius visa, OK? You realize that in the United States, 50% of all PhD candidates are foreign born. At my system, one of the biggest in the United States, 100% of the PhD candidates are foreign born. The United States is a magnet sucking up all the brains of the world, but now the brains are going back. Right. They're going back to China. They're going back to India. And people are saying, oh my god, there's a Silicon Valley in India now. Oh my god, there's a Silicon Valley in China. Duh. Where did it come from? It came from the United States. So don't tell me that science is in the engine of prosperity. You remove the H-1B visa, and you collapse the economy. In Wall Street Journal, editorialized against a congressman who wanted to ban the H-1B, saying they'll take jobs away from the American people. The Wall Street Journal said, look, there are no Americans who can take these jobs. These are at the highest level of high technology. They don't take away jobs from Americans. They create entire industries. We, and so that's why we have an Achilles heel, and that's the educational system. The and again, irony, sociology irony, majors irony is, are not necessarily going to be the ones determining the future of Silicon Valley. The, I, but physicists, okay. the engineers, is, the we need more of them, not less. The irony is, the irony is, 